Revelation, I just declare that it flows freely, unhindered, uninterrupted by any satanic or demonic force. Speak to my vocal cords and think through my mind, none of me and all of you. And God, I just declare that I decrease so that the word of God may increase into the, into the ears of these, your precious sheep. Father, I thank you that their ears are anointed to hear the word of God. Their hearts are good ground to receive the word of God. And God, all I'm doing is reminding them of what they already know in you, the promises of God. And I declare that they stagger not at those, God. And Father, I thank you for the children's ministry and the youth ministry. I just declare they are anointed, appointed, and approved to minister that word to our generations. We give you all the honor, all the glory, and all of the praise. And it's in Jesus' name. And the church said, oh, go ahead and shout about that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go ahead and hug your two people. Go ahead and hug your two people. High five them. Glory to God. Bible, slip your hands up, ushers can bring you one, borrow you one. Uh, just want to make sure you can follow along as we move through this word swiftly tonight. Um, praise God for Elder Lord. She did an awesome job uh, last Wednesday. Thank God for her. Praise God. I thank God for that. I was telling somebody the other day, it's, 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 it's funny to me because God has charged me with raising women up in ministry <laughs> that's just i never i never even seen that coming and I, I i just i never even seen it coming but but it just won't leave me alone i want them to see them i want to see them be the best they can be i want to see them uh, share the word of god with people and lives be blessed i just want to see that and you know as the men of this church we're not intimidated by that we want we, we right. you want people to do well you want people to exceed you and um, Elder Lori did an awesome job, so I just thank God for her. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Boy, if you ain't raising nothing up, you ain't doing nothing. Man, I'm the baddest one on the planet out of the whole bunch. Man, you ain't, you, 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 you're not doing nothing. Leaders work their way to the back of the room. Did you understand that? Leaders work their way to the back of the room. Now, don't get to the back of the room, you ain't develop nothing. <laughs> You'll be sitting like that mad. But I want to continue in this series, um, this discipleship series, and what it means to be discipled by Christ. What it means to be a disciple. We know a disciple is, 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 is a follower of Christ, and, 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 and we said earlier in the series, it takes an anointing to follow, to submit, to lay down, and say, you know what? I lay my life down, and I'm going to follow this example. I'm going to follow this word. I'm going to follow my Savior. I'm going to follow my Lord. And his teachings. It, it takes some anointing to do that. How many people know our old ways will resurrect themselves every now and then? I'm talking to the point against scripture. It will erect itself and stand up against scripture. That old man rises up. What is it saying? Man, I can't bring my life under what he's saying right here. I, I, can't, I, can't, I just can't forgive. He said, no, I want to disciple you in forgiveness. And I, I, I just can't let it go. No, no, no. I want to disciple you and letting it go. And I just, I just, I can't see myself being this or that. I can't see it. You know, what I've learned, a lot of people in the church struggle with low self-esteem. And as a disciple of Christ, you got to know who died for you and who lives in you. Now, some people are very clever at managing it always staying on their strength they won't touch a weakness they won't touch the unknown why they're trying to protect something that doesn't even exist christ i died for your freedom not to be in bondage to what you don't know how to do you 
can't be in bondage as a disciple. And the disciples, <laughs> man, look, they were supposed to be following Christ, but we can see throughout Scripture where he turned to them and said, you don't even know who you are. Matter of fact, you don't even know what spirit you're of, and you're following me. How did that even happen? Oh, you're trying to give Christ something that you think he wants, and he doesn't want that. He said, you free. And we're going to see in the Word tonight. I, I was telling Minister Jones, I said, man, I've seen something in the Word today. I just, it's nothing spectacular, but we'll see if it's the cabbage or the Holy Ghost. Turn with me to John chapter 8. A disciple of Christ being discipled by Christ and the word of God. <clears throat> John chapter 8, verse 28. Then Jesus said unto them, he's talking to these Jewish guys. <clears throat> when you have lifted up the son of man, then you shall know that I am he and that I do nothing of myself. Look at that now. That's a powerful trait to have as a disciple. I don't care how good you are in something. You always need to keep a revelation. I do nothing of myself. It's the Father that lives in me, that empowers me to do what you see me doing. But as my Father, watch this now, watch the posture of Jesus. As my Father has taught me. In your notes, before we go any further, as a disciple, you must have a posture of being taught. And not just have the posture, it should become a part of your Christian walk. What? Lower yourself to be taught. Because Jesus says right here in verse 28, he said, look, I do nothing of myself, but as my father has taught me. I speak these things. And he said, and he that sent me is, watch this now, is with me. So when I say as a disciple, we can't have low self-esteem in the church. It's just a lack of revelation who's with you. And you're trying to protect something that doesn't need protecting. Why? Because Jesus Christ is with you. You'd be shocked at how much the spirit of embarrassment stops people, people, from being great. They're afraid to be embarrassed. There you go. There you go. There you go. <laughs> we got that little Alexa thing in the house. Remember, remember, remember that? We, we were just kind of painting or something like that and just kind of chit-chatting and talking this, that, and the other. And I don't know. I just don't know what happened that day. But, I was, but we were like, we need to turn her off and turn her off right now. No, you said that. And about five minutes later, she says, Zephyr, why would you want to do that? Why would you want to turn me off? <laughs> Remember that? And then I see the day on Squawk Box where, where the little glitch with Google Home. The, the guy took the little Google Home the thing, the little Google Home thing home, and it was recording everything he was doing. And Google comes out with the little press release. Yeah, we, we, we quickly updated the software. I was like, man, oh, man, oh, man. Oh, my God. And, 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 and the people at the corporate office heard everything. He was, wow. I think he was singing a song or something like that. Man, this smart home stuff is something else. It can get away from you real quick. Verse 29, and he that sent me is with me. Watch this. As a disciple, the Father has not left me alone. I can't tell you how many times in this, <laughs> in this past year and a half where I couldn't even turn to my wife. I couldn't even, I said, you know what, this, this, this fear, I'm going to take to the Father. Because I don't want to, I don't want to run the risk of being consoled in this. And it still stays in me. This fear right here, I'm taking to the Father. This stress right here, I'm taking to him. What I'm thinking in my heart right now, I got to take it to him. Because if I release it, I may be consoled or I may be protected. And that wouldn't work for us. It never does. It never does work when you provoke your spouse to get in the flesh. 
Why? Because you're one. You're one flesh. You've got to be real careful with that. <sighs> Father's not left me alone. For I do always those things, watch this, as a disciple, that please him. In your notes, <clears throat> uh, I guess I'll say it right. <laughs> in your notes, as a believer, as a disciple that believes in Christ, As a disciple that believes in Christ, look at your life and ask yourself, is it pleasing to the Father? Why? Wow, disciples were always, he said, look, one of you guys is going to betray me. And they was like, okay, well, is, is it me? Who, you, you think it's, you, you, man, I, I hope. Look, you got to look at your life as a disciple and make sure that as you follow Christ, you are living Christ. Verse 30, as he spake these words, watch this now, <laughs> as he lays out his job description <laughs> as the Savior, as he lays out his relationship with the Father, his proximity to him, watch this, as he spake these words, many believed on him, not all of them. Why would you even say many? Many believed on him, which implies everybody didn't believe it. Watch this. Then Jesus said to those Jews, people who had lived a certain way under the law all their lives, he said to them, he said, Jews, watch this, which now believe on him. See, we think coming out of the world, you know, is, 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 is just so difficult. Come out of the world, give your life to Christ, put my music down. Put the, put the Henny down and put the Remy down and put the, the, the vodka and all that stuff, the tangerine and cranberry, put it all down. And, and man, man, we really did something. But these Jews didn't even see him as the Messiah. But guess what? By revelation, they believed on him. Not by mama kicking, up to, kicking him up to the altar. Not by your wife saying, you better get up there and get your life together. No, that's, 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 that's forceful. By revelation, they believed on him. <clears throat> and he said to them, if you continue in my word. Now watch the back half of this now. Then you are my disciples indeed. Which implies disciples live in the word. Disciples of Christ, they live in the word. They don't live in what was. They don't live in, uh, I watch TV today, I got my dose of God on channel 234, or whatever that is. No, 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 no. You live in that word. Why? That word inspired by men to write it, inspired by the Spirit of God to write it to us, to give us a glimpse of our Lord and Savior, how he lived, how he relates to the Father, how we should relate to sin, how we should relate to eternal life, how we should relate to grace. Guess what? You have to spend time in that thing on your lap. Because if you do that, he says, you are my disciples, not just my disciples, indeed. There's a surety behind being a disciple when you spend time in that word. Because I tell you what, if I don't spend time in the word of God and something strikes me wrong or the day goes wrong, I'm telling you, a discipleship may not come out. What comes out? Whatever you're meditating on. How do you act when you get to work? How have you left the house? How have you got out the car? I mean, what, what, what would you listen to? Bruno Mars? I mean, what? what? <laughs> is that the first thing you listen to riding to work? Or, or, or is it, or is it, I'm going to invest in my soul this morning. Why? Because when I get around a group of people with different personalities, different likings, different, I mean, I had better be discipled by this word because, because I got to be an indeed disciple. Derek, did you make it through today? Yep, you're my disciple indeed. Man, did you make it through that crowd? Did you make it through that team meeting? I, I heard it was pretty fiery in there. Yeah, I made it through. I kept, I kept myself together. You are my disciple indeed. Not disciple by the word in a meeting where everybody's coming after you. You know what you do? You get offended. I see it all the time in church. And I can just look and go, you're not spending time with God. That's a small thing. <laughs> 
Nigga, you come up here for three weeks. <laughs> I have to take my inbox <laughs> for six months. And, man, you, you, you'll just go, people, people need friends. <laughs> see, we're going to see in the word tonight, you are so fooled. Not, not a fool, but fooled if you think that everybody likes you. <laughs> you're a fool. I tell you right now, you're a fool. <laughs> You can sit back and go, man, I would never, I, I would be perfect at that. I would never, da, 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 I would really run it. And it's like, I, <laughs> my pastor said in Atlanta, he said, on Sunday, you preach and they love you because you preach their passion. He said, you got seven days. You preach something that they don't like, and guess what? They're gone. I said, man, a lot of good gracious, a lot. And you know what? We're going to see in the word of God what, what Jesus told his disciples about that. So, <clears throat> When I say John 8 flipped me on my head today, in your notes, I want you to write this down. The Son set me free. Men and women of God reminded and reminds me of that freedom in Christ. But men didn't set me free. And if we don't get a revelation as disciples that Jesus set us free, the Son set us free, and the fivefold ministry, week in and week out, should be reminding you that Jesus set you free. Not me. <laughs> Not this church. <laughs> Jesus set you free. And when you get a revelation of that, he says, look, you are my disciples. Watch this now. You're my disciples indeed. Why? You got a revelation of who really set you free. You know, a guy commits a crime, and, 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 and he's, he's sitting there with his lawyer and all this kind of stuff, and he gets off, and, 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 he's, and he says, look, I want to take you to lunch. And he's sitting down with his lawyer, and he tells his lawyer, man, thank you for setting me free. Your lawyer didn't set you free. You're thinking the wrong one. It was a judge and a jury that set you free. The lawyer argued the law on your behalf, but he did not set you free. He does not have that power. The judge has that power. And as disciples, you need to get a revelation of who set you free and who lives in you. And guess what? All I do on Sunday is come up here and argue against the devil and make sure that he's not getting in your head, making you think that man, mama, daddy, husband, wife, children set you free, a business set you free, goal set you free, uh, being successful set you free. None of that set you free. The son, Christ, set you free. And he said, look, you are my disciples and you are my disciples indeed. Get that revelation of who set you free. You'll stop all this bondage stuff. You'll stop all of this perfection. You'll stop all. Watch this. The stressfulness of being a Christian will leave your life. I'm so against try harder Christianity. And if we're going to be discipled by Christ in the word of God, we've got to get a revelation as a disciple of who really set us free. And then he said, continue in it. What do you mean continue in it? Continue in it. Don't, don't hop off track with this happy life stuff. Talking about you free. You're going to be free and fleshy. Not listening to nothing. Not abiding in nothing. Not bending your knee to nothing. You're just free and fleshy. Let's see how long that lasts. <clears throat> oh, boy. With no revelation of what Christ did on that cross. Notice I said Revelation. We will keep trying to break free from a jail that has doors unlocked all the time when you accept Jesus into your life. We'll keep trying to live up to something, and it's like, what are you you're trying to outdo the cross? No, he set you free when all that happened. No, nah, but you know what I'm saying? 20 years of this in my life, this, da, 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 depression and all this kind of stuff, 20 years of fibromyalgia in, in my body, 20 years of, 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 of diabetes, you, you know what I'm saying? I, listen, I, I hear what you're saying, but... Upon that cross was the ultimate obedience for you as a disciple to be set free. So you can say that. See, many times pastor says, 
have preached that to me, have said that to me. And I go, yeah, 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 yeah. But when I got a revelation of it, I say, you know what? That's it for this try hard of Christianity. That's it. I ain't got to try no more. Jesus done paid all, paid it all. I don't have to come along with no more down payments, no swiping my credit card to get, get, get free and all this kind of stuff because Christ paid the price for me as a disciple of Christ just to be free. And I want people to be free. You know what? Boy, if you hang out with me in Universal Studios and you get spiritual and spooking and deep and all that kind of stuff, who, who you buying that for? Oh, my aunt in Atlanta. Oh, God, that's of the devil. You know, you know, this is of the devil. Now, you, you don't want to give that to your little aunt, your little niece? You, you, you don't want to do that? You know what, man? We'll, we'll make it through the day. But I promise you this. It won't be a repeat. <laughs> now you're creating bondage and going on. Now, uh, let's go to Matthew chapter 10. Freedom. As a disciple. Matthew 10. Boy, it feels good in here. Uh, 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 uh. You know, when my mom passed, I didn't get free from that until like 20 years. <laughs> Christ preached, born again, all this kind of stuff. Kept trying to resurrect her and all this kind of stuff in my mind. And all this. Did I have memories? Yes. Did I have emotions? Yes. But the bottom line was she was dead. And it wasn't God's fault. But it took me 20 years to get that revelation. Think about that. 20 years? Yeah. I just wasn't free in that area. I just wasn't free, but I'm free today. So Matthew 10, let's stay on track here. Matthew 10, uh, verse, verse 1. And when he had called unto him his 12 disciples, he gave them what? Do you have power? Do you live like you have power? Do you respond to crisis like you have power? Do you respond to depression like you have power? Do you respond to stress like you have power? Because guess what? Jesus gave it to you. Power against. What's that? Anything that comes at you. Anything that contradicts the promises of God. Guess what? He gave you power to push back against that not with works not with self-righteousness with a revelation of what jesus did on that cross for his disciples then he lists them out list all the names then skip on down to verse five these 12 disciples he sent forth and commanded them saying go not into the way of the gentiles and into any city and into any city of samarians enter not that city verse six but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. <laughs> Watch this. And as you go, here's what I need you to do. Preach. And when you preach, just don't say stuff. Tell them this. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now here's what you're going to do, disciple. I need you to heal the sick. Cleanse the lepers. Watch this. Raise the dead. Cast out devils. Freely you have received. Now freely I want you to give. As a disciple, you have to have a revelation when something is being freely given to you. I got a revelation of that. Man, I was learning stuff when I first got born again, when I first became a minister, when I first encountered world changers, Dr. Dollar, at that time, Minister Mike, went on to be Pastor Mike. I, I was learning stuff, and you know what? It was given to me freely. But for disciples, don't stop there. See, we get stuff given to us freely as disciples, and then we get high and mighty. We don't want to give back too stressed out to volunteer go do a council session with who why, why i gotta do that we're gonna go down here and feed why, why i gotta do that see you don't have a revelation of what was freely given to you he gave those disciples instructions now get a revelation of that and you'll freely give it back <clears throat> that's power in giving back <clears throat> let's keep going here verse 9 Provide neither gold nor silver nor brass in your purses. What he's saying now, as a disciple, I got to teach you how to live off of the word of God. 
At some point in our walk as a disciple, we have to learn how to live off the word of God. I tell you what, me and my wife have had two seasons like that where it was, it was no games. It was no, man, it's really hard out here. It was, it was, it was, it was watching my wife in the morning get out of bed and fall to her knees right by the bed, turn on praise and worship, and just lift her hands and praise God because that's all we had at the time. And he's 18, whatever it is, months. That's all we had. No friends calling, nobody encouraging, none of that kind of stuff. All we had was the word of God when our eyes popped open because we was like, man, I don't even want to go up there today. I don't even want to deal with it. God, you done told us to do this. I don't even, I don't even, just forget it. Just from saying this, just from saying that, I, the, the, these pushing against us, I, I just don't want no any part. Let me tell you something. All you have is the word of God. And if you live your whole Christian life and you never get to a point, I heard Dr. Dollar say, he said, if you ever get so much money that you don't have to believe God, you're not in a good place. You're not in a good place. You need to give something. You need to feel something. <laughs> Because now all of a sudden, you, you, you're at a point in your life where you're not believing God for anything. You're not trusting on him for anything. So she would, and I got it on video. And I would just look and go, there's nothing I can do. She, she's talking to the right one right now. I can console. I can do it. Matter of fact, I'm not going to say nothing. I'll just be quiet. I'll sit here and watch. And as I watched, I watched a woman who understood who the son of man was. Because you know what she didn't do? She didn't shake me at 5 o'clock. She didn't say, get up. She didn't pout. <clears throat> she didn't throw her hands up. She got up and went straight to that straight to that floor. I'm going to pray on our anniversary in this building. Straight to that floor, praising God, lifting her hands and crying. And you know what I had to do? I had to sit there and go stay plugged into God. If I go over there and interrupt that, that's not going to be good. But I tell you what, when she's finished, she'll get embraced, she'll get encouraged, but I'm not going to interrupt a disciple who is getting free in God right now. That word, that word took care of her. If you live your life and you never get to that point, I'm just not a crier. I just, I don't, I don't, I don't you know, <laughs> man. Woo, Lord, have mercy. Man, she cried when it was really rough. Guess what? When it really got going good, we cried too. God, you're so good to us. Man, we couldn't see our way through this. Lord, have mercy. And, and, and a disciple has a revelation of how to follow Christ. I follow him when it's good. I praise him when it's good. I hit my knees when it's good. I hit my knees when it's bad. Why? I am free and I am free indeed. And man reminds me of that freedom, but I can't call man and he can keep me free. He, he can't do it. He can pacify me. But I got to be free in Christ. In other words, I'm going to be a recurring event in a lot of people's life with the same old mess. It's like, how many times we got to talk about this? You want me to set you free? You want her to set you free? You want your business to set you free? You want this new adventure to set you free? It's not going to work. That's going to die down too. And you're going to get a revelation that I need to be free and free indeed in Christ Amen. as a disciple. Think about that. I'm following Christ who only does what the Father says to do, we should lack no thing. And I'm here to push back against it with this series. We should lack no thing. We should not be stressful. We should, we should be walking in so much power. I'm talking so much power and so much freedom and so much, so much to the point where, where you go, this is scary. <laughs> We're scary. I'm, I'm so free in Christ. I mean, I'm not fleshy, but I'm just, I'm just free. Well, what did you do? Man, my wife had a headache. I laid hands on it. It, just, it, it left. My kids came in there with a sniffle. I said, that, that's it. I'm no more just rushing to the cabinet. Let me lay hands on them too. I heard a bad report about this, 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 this. Oh, I got a bad report, and guess what? I laid hands on myself, lift my hands up. I declared my healing because I know what happened on that cross. And guess what? You're making preemptive strikes against the enemy to get in your mind. As a disciple, you got to be skilled in that. What are they asking? What, what did he come to him and say when he says, look, he rebuked the winds, he rebuked the sea, and he came to him and said, oh, you have little faith. You mean to tell me when a storm comes in your life, you got to run and scream to me? 
and wake me up. You don't know what I did on the cross. You can seek me in prayer. But you'd rather run across the hallway to your wife. You could seek me in prayer, but you'd rather text your husband. Let me tell you something. You should be an encouragement. When he look at your text, it should be an encouragement. Not from emotions, from the word of God. See, get your head up. Get your head up. Look, you need to know who lives in you. Stop all this stuff. Why? Because I know my wife will feed off of that. Or she's going to feed off. That man walks in the power of God. That man, that man seeks God right there. And when you see God and come out of it, you know what? There's no moping. As a disciple, there's no second guessing. I'm like, ready. You should be ready. When you spend time with God, you should be ready. I'm not talking about works. I'm talking about you should just be so free in his promises. And the Bible says, stagger not at the promises of God. You shouldn't be staggering. Disciples with a revelation of what I'm talking about. There's no staggering. There's no recurring. It's like, you still have that attitude? <laughs> you still that easily offended? My God. I thought about it. What if, <laughs> what if you're 55 and you're still arguing on Facebook? <laughs> you're 55 years old arguing on Facebook about what happened 10 years ago? 55? Man, you're not free. You, you, you. Well, what is that? What is it for a 45-year-old, 40-year-old, 35-year-old arguing on social media? What the little memes say? Get your life. Get your life, man. My Lord, you are a disciple of Christ. Still arguing. You still worrying about that money? Money still tugs when you like that? My God, we got to get free. And we got to get free indeed. And he says, don't take anything with you. No shoes, no staves, for the workman is worthy of his meat, verse 11. And into whatsoever city or town you shall enter, inquire who, uh, inquire who in it is worthy. And there abide till you go thence. Verse 12. And when you come into a house, guess what you do? Salute it. As a disciple, learn how to enter into something with peace. Because if you can enter in it with peace, you can come out of it with peace. I don't believe that. It's up for scripture right here. Um, and, and if that house be worthy, let your peace. So when you salute, it's peace. Let your peace come upon it. As a disciple, but if it be not worthy, let your peace, watch this, return to you. Amen. Says the disciple, as we walk with God and people don't accept us, yeah. we lose our peace. There's no salute because you have no revelation of how you got in it. You know, I got a revelation. Some, man, I, you got to think about your immediate family nowadays. And just, and just figure out, okay, what are they giving me? They're giving you love, brother. Support. Unconditional love. Keep your parameters right there. And you know what you will keep? Your peace. You expect friend 4100 to agree with everything you say? <laughs> and now all of a sudden, friend 4100 is dictating how you? You arguing with friend 3800? Matter of fact, how do they do to come on here and say something. You know what? Disciples, what he said, let your peace return to you. In other words, just get them out of there as a disciple. Following Christ is not going to be this peachy cream thing. At some point, you have to say to your friend, let's not go there. What? Let's, let's, let's hold up now. You're getting fleshy with your mouth. I, I don't want to go there. I don't want to go there. That's the third time you've said it. I, I, I don't want to hear that now. And, 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 and if you don't have a friendship like that, you, you just got pizzas and cream. But at some point, see, as a disciple, I got an aunt who loves God, all that kind of stuff. But if I really want to know the truth, if I really want to know the truth, she has no problem 
telling me the truth. And some of your friends tell you, hey, that ain't right right there. Yeah, but I want to. No, they'll tell you. No, I don't think that's right. But show me a scripture. I don't need no scripture. I don't, I don't, I don't think that's right. You, 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 you need people in your life like that. But here's the key. You got to listen to them. You're afraid to believe it. <clears throat> he says, and let your peace return to you. First, verse 14, and whosoever shall not receive you, nor even hear your words, when you depart out of that house or city, shake the dust off your feet. As a disciple, we got, let me get back up here. Let me get back up here. As a disciple of Christ, learn that you on the meat and spit out the bones. Man, I was talking about Christ. This Muslim guy just kind of really came at me, this, that, and the other kind of. Man, everybody in the break room was laughing, da, 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 da. Look, I know my God. He can keep going on with facts and A.D. and before Christ and all this kind. He, he can keep going on with that. Man, get out of that break room and shake the dust off your feet as a disciple. You got to have a st- you got to have an innate skill of moving on. And he told them, he was teaching them, listen now, you're going to go into a town? Hey, when you walk in, be respectful, be honorable, salute them. And let me tell you something. <laughs> they start getting crazy, all this kind of stuff, stuff, let your peace return to you. Don't you get stressed out. Don't you get in the flesh as a disciple and you get out of that house. And I know it's going to get to you. I know, I know you're going to think about it. You, for a minute or two, you're human. But I tell you what you need to do. Shake the dust off your feet and keep on going. Keep going where? To somebody who will receive you. Remember, disciples know how to come under. And they're learning right here. Hey, they don't do that. Man, you <laughs> we can get a crazy inbox on Facebook or whatever it is. Mr. Fun Church or whatever, you know, whatever people in Jacksonville want to call it. Mr. Black Joel Osteen and all this kind of stuff. You, you, you just come in and you just kind of say something, all this kind of stuff. But you know what? Right on the heels of stuff like that, you know, you just get an email out of nowhere, just, just out of nowhere. Thank God for you, this, that, the word did this, the word did that. I go, who is that right there? And it's like, shake the dust off your feet and keep moving. And guess what? Your peace will return to you as a disciple. Go where you're going to be received. Yeah. <clears throat> and as a disciple, you got to get that. <laughs> no, I run my thing so tight and so this and so that, and everyone loves it and all this kind of stuff. Believe me. Believe me, everyone don't love it. They're just, you know what they're doing? They're just they're serving. They're coming under. But they don't agree with everything. That's a part of life. But I tell you, I tell you what is Jesus? Learn how to come under. Pull your passions back. Come under and let the greatest among you guys become a servant. Amen. What am I saying? Lower yourself. A disciple has that trait. Lower yourself. I don't agree. Learn how to lower yourself and not get offended. You don't get a revelation of what I'm saying? You're going to have two stories going on in your discipleship. The discipler is like, man, they're on fire. They're loving everything. They're doing this. And the one who fails to learn how to come under. Because if you're ever going to lead anything, you better get this revelation. You better sow what you want. In public and private. And, 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 <laughs> and it's like, man, they're on fire. This, that, and the other, da, da, da. And their story in their head is I hate your guts. You're controlling and all this kind of stuff. No, I'm not controlling. Your last husband was controlling. I'm just another man that you're relating that to. Yeah, just, just so control. No, no, I'm not controlling. Your dad controlled you when you was young. And the word of God has not discipled you that. So you'll go from relationship to relationship. And that thing will keep erecting itself. And everybody is flawed. No, 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 no. You're not free in Christ. Because whom the Son has set free, watch this, is free indeed. Above all this stuff back, happen back, that happened back here, they are free. And disciples deserve to be free in him. Yeah. You hear what I'm telling you? Boy, if I could pop out by three or four babies, right? I tell you, I, I have a family so big. I, 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 <laughs> shoot. Man, I, I have I seven of them running around here. I, 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 I said, I was, I, was, I was like, man, I was in so much money. Oh, my God. I'm thinking about daycare. I'm thinking about babysitting and all this kind of stuff. I'm like, man, I'd have had seven or eight of them jokers running around that house. 
You got a dog on big family? You better be happy. And you better enjoy them. You better enjoy them kids and live free, man. Amen. You look over your life, you go, man, why well, didn't what was I able? I can't. He was in bondage. I'm so, I'm so serious right now. I can hop in a time machine and hey. You know, you know, you know, blanks here. I, I mean, hey, I, God, I want to pull it off. He can go ahead and pull it off here. Shoot. <laughs> oh my gosh! I'm here to tell you, brother. I'm, I'm enjoy your family, enjoy your kids, enjoy your loved ones. Be free in Christ, my Lord. You know, you, 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 you. you I, I'm just telling you. I, I just can't wait for the grandkids. It's just they got full permission. Go for it, Brady Bunch. Dr. Zahler said about a year ago, he said, he, said, he, said, he said, man, before this grace message, he said, I'd be in the back and everybody would just, don't go in there. He's about to preach. <laughs> don't, 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 don't do this. He's about to preach. Don't, don't interrupt the anointing. He said, he got a revelation one day. He said, man, I got a revelation that I am lonely back here. <laughs> get them great kids in here. Get, 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 y'all come on in here. The minister, y'all, y'all come on back in here. What? My life is going by. Talking about y'all going to interrupt your anointing. I'm already ready to go. But I need some laughter in my life. You need some laughter in your life. Ease up. Let the word disciple you. Ease up. That one thing that keeps recurring in your life, let the word disciple Let the word conquer it. Know that you're living for Christ. Know that you're communing with Christ. Know that he's walking with you in that meeting. You need to know that he's with you versus guessing games. No, I walk in power. I walk in power. You walk in power. You can lay hands on the sick and they recover. You know one of the first places I need to lay hands on? My sick, depressed mind in the area of death concerning my mom. Everything else was 95%. This 5% right here (laughs) would wreak havoc in my peace. And it was continuing because if she got sick, it reminded me again. Remember the last outcome? When that first woman in your life got sick, what was that outcome? Oh, that was death. Z, you want some leave? You want some Benadryl? What is it? Your head okay? Oh, you're hot? You got a fever? Oh, I'm, I'm good. Oh, yeah, you, you sure? You going to sleep? Oh, hey, hey you, you woke? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I said, my God, I got I to gotta stop this. I got to get away from this. Then when Zari got over to this now, oh, she, oh, she's, she's cramping. Just, gosh. Here I go. The Spirit of God and his word is what we, we exalt that over the menstrual cycle. Now, we don't need none of that stuff. I don't want to raise her like that. No, 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 no. You're afraid again. When she says, I don't feel good, I, I just want to leave. I just, you're afraid the outcome has trickled down to her now. Boy, you better get yourself free. You better stop going to that church playing game, raising your hand, talking about you free or you free indeed. You better get before God yourself because all man's going to do is remind you of your freedom. But you got to get a revelation as a disciple of Christ that you are free and you're free indeed. And you don't know that until you're alone. You don't know that until you acknowledge that one thing that whips your spiritual tail. See, honesty is the prerequisite to your breakthrough. You don't have to be honest with the person next to you. Be honest with the person looking in the mirror and go, you know what? I'm afraid of that. But you know what? I'm not afraid to the point where I give the devil dominion over my life. I'm afraid to the point where let me stop trying to fix this myself or go into man trying to get him to fix it. And as a disciple of Christ, let me get over here to him and allow him to address what's going on with me. I don't want to carry this thing. And watch this. Man, it's my dysfunction as a disciple because if I keep doing that, I'm going to steal something. I'm going to betray Jesus. Did somebody do that? I'm going to make some false promises out of my mouth and say, I'll never leave you. Well, you're speaking out of your flesh. You don't even know, you don't, you, you don't even know who you're rolling with, Peter. I'll never leave you, I promise. He goes, huh. watch that rooster. Three times, you're out of there. Hey, man, don't you, don't you know? No, I don't know him. I heard you talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I don't know him. It's like, man, a lot. What happened? What happened to you? What happened? Along the way, you was dishonest. 
He was dishonest to Christ. But you know what? Christ didn't condemn him. He, he kissed Judas on the cheek. Kept on rocking and rolling. Think about that. Boy, if you knew that somebody was going to plant something and you lose your job, and you know they're going to plant something in, 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 in your lunchbox or whatever it is, you're going to lose your job, and you turn to them at Mom and Fools and you say, We've been fellowshipping for two years. <laughs> and you know what? I just want to bless you and you. Just give me a hug, brother. And you hug them. Could you hug them knowing that tomorrow they will betray, betray you with human resources? <laughs> Jesus was free in the Father. That's where his freedom was. Because in the flesh, you can't do that. <laughs> you can't do it. <clears throat> Just keep rocking and rolling here. So verse 14, and who shall, who shall not receive you? Nor even listen to what you're saying. <laughs> I sound like my wife. When I'm just need to take my pills. I'm, I'm not on medication, but you know, like, like you, you, you're frantic. You, everything is okay. Just be quiet. She'll go. What are you saying? <laughs> that that lets you know how outlandish I'm talking. <laughs> what are you? What are you saying? God is here. You're okay. What are you even saying? See, sometimes you get to the point where you got to conjure up something. You even feel like you're walking with God. No, she's like, what are you saying? Look at this. Look at that. What? She's reminding a disciple of their fruit. So no, they, they don't even hear your words. And when you depart out of that house, what that city shake goes over your feet. Verse 15. Verily I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. He is forewarning them. Everybody's not going to receive you. Everybody don't want to hear about what you got to say and all that kind of stuff. Everybody don't want to hear about your little four constants. Everybody, wanna hear, everybody don't want to hear that. There's going to be somebody who's saying, you know what, that's a little bit too on the diligent side there. But they don't understand, I already believe Christ. I don't have to be convinced of Jesus Christ and what he did for me. And you know what, I believe that and I honor math. And my life has been grand and great the last 20 years. And you, just, you want more faith out of me? I, I got faith. Faith to say what? This is going to happen by this calculator. And I trust God that if it's him, it'll go. If it's not, he'll shut it down. That's it. But you swing way over here and ignore the math. And you'll rely on miracles all your life. And mock the one who's walking by faith and a calculator. <laughs> the disciples ain't dumb. A lot of people think, oh, you're a flunky. Ain't no flunky. Ain't no flunky. I just knew how to come under. I knew how to follow. I knew how to observe. But I also knew, you remind me who set me free. You remind me every Sunday who set me free. But it wasn't you who set me free. Because when you lock on to man as a disciple, you're making a colossal mistake. Why? Man is not constant. Salvation is constant. That cross is constant. And that cross set you free. Man reminded you of that. When you get those confused, guess where you're going to be? Confused. Verse 16. Behold, I send you forth as sheep. Watch this now. This is not no peaches and cream for these guys. As sheep in the midst of wolves. But you therefore, I want you to do this. Be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Somebody say smooth operator. Disciples have a flow to them. When you're being counseled by the word of God, you don't jump, right? You don't jump to stuff. You don't, as a disciple, you don't jump on stuff. Be wise. Harmless. Be wise. That's a trait of a disciple. But I see some disciples are into everything. Yeah, you see what that guy believe? Yeah, I don't care. You're not going to do nothing about it? No. Nope. You don't think you can do something about it? No, I don't think I can. I think I think I know what can happen. What can happen, brother? I'll get cursed out. <laughs> Why? He believe it. I don't. I don't care. I don't have to engage him. I, I don't. Why? It's not any unconditional love in this house. I mean, I, hey, I, 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 I salute it. My peace returned to me. And I understand the robustness of that kind of person. I ain't got to do nothing with him. Let, let him go for it. 
They're going to destroy the world. Oh, boy, here we go. One person from a clinic <laughs> or Orange Park in 140 characters is going to destroy the world. It's going to water Christ down. It's going to kill the church. Set the church straight. One little person. Man, I ain't got time to argue with that. <laughs> and you don't either. <laughs> stay in him. Somebody says stay in him. Stay in him. Man, girl, where you been? In him. <laughs> Brother, I, in him. Brother, I thought you were really going. No, I, I stay in him, brother. No, I, I, matter of fact, I, just, I, I bless the guy. What? Yeah, I stay in him. I'm a disciple of Christ. This word has discipled me, brother. <clears throat> mm. So in the midst of wolves, be ye therefore wise as serpent and harmless as dove, verse 17. But be aware of men. We're so afraid to say that. And as a disciple, that's discipled by Christ, he instructed them, beware of men. Like I said, men will love you on Sunday, cut your tail up on Wednesday. Men are inconsistent. When I say men, mankind, they're inconsistent. Nobody can maintain that. If you think you're saying the perfect thing to the perfect ears all the time, nobody can maintain that. You just got a bunch of people, including myself, that know how to hmm, chew on that, spit it out. But I still know how to come under. I was a master at it. Still am. Disciples, oh gosh, I'm getting ahead of myself. Disciples have a revelation when greater is in the room. Disciples have a revelation when greater is in the room. And I have to say in the room because in, in another room across the hall, they can be amongst the great and they got to come under. Disciples, they need to have a revelation when greater is in the room. I've been in a room and uh, <laughs> a guy's just yicking and yakking, just talking. And you look down at his feet and go, man, you ain't got no money. You look at his fingernails and go, man, you <laughs> man, you know, you better, you better go see Leon Nails or somebody. You, you, ain't, you ain't got the money you're talking about. What, you just in a room, you just want to tell everybody what you got. You don't know how to come under. There's four stockbrokers in here and you, and you, what do you, be quiet. They know how to come under. They have a revelation when greater is in the room. And when greater is in the room, you know the posture they take? Hmm. What, did he tell, what, what did Jesus tell his disciples? A disciple is what? Not higher than his master. One translation says one day they can be equal to their teacher and amplify what he said. But they got to understand, you better keep that posture. You, you better keep it. So I said, where is a deep revelation, brother? I need some deep revelation. I don't need no deep revelation. <laughs> I, really, I, I, <laughs> I really understand what happened on the cross. And um, I really understand grace now. I really do. And uh, I just don't need no, I don't need no deep revelation. I don't need it. I'll tell you what I do. I'll tell you what God is, is doing with me now. He's taking me higher than I'll get the wisdom on something. I said, I got to get the wisdom on that. He said, <clears throat> No, you don't. Let me lead you in it. Oh, gosh. See, that little get the wisdom is, I'm going to handle this myself, really. I need to get the wisdom on that. No, you don't. Let me lead you in this. What? That's higher. That's walking with Christ like a barefooted priest. <clears throat> mm. Beware of men, for they will deliver you up in the councils, <laughs> and they will scourge you in the synagogues, brother. Beware of them. And you shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. But when they deliver you up, here's what I want you to do. Take no thought how or what you shall speak as a disciple, for it shall be given unto you in that same hour what you shall speak. There's something higher than get the wisdom on it. You know what it is? Let me lead you. So when you get in there in front of those governors and that council, don't, you, don't, don't write no page of notes. You step right in there and you let me lead you. I'll tell you what to say. And the disciple understands that there comes a time in your life where you need to just stop, put the books down, put it down, put your philosophy down, and let the word of God lead you when you open your mouth. Uh, 
All right. Two minutes. The clock says five. That's interesting. Luke chapter six. Have fun, man. I said, what are you going to do tonight? Hopefully go home and eat some. We ain't got nothing cooked. Your wife didn't cook nothing? No, she didn't cook nothing. Chipotle's still open, right? Just, just put a debit card out. My wife need to cook for me. No, she don't. She doesn't know how to order food for you. That's still taking care of you. So Luke 6. So he's talking to the disciples about being, loving your enemies, forgiving them, being merciful. Verse 37, judge not. Verse 38, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure pressed down. Uh, verse 38, Luke 6, 38. Good measure pressed down and shaken together and running over shall men give unto your bosom. For with the same measure that you meet, with, a, with, with the same measure shall be met unto you again. Verse 39. And he spake a parable unto them. Can the blind lead the blind? Boy, don't have a blind spouse leading you. Somebody got to see. He said, can the blind lead the blind? And he said, he said can the blind lead the blind? Shall they both not fall into a ditch? Ain't nobody listening to God. Watch this. Ain't nobody using common sense. Sometimes those disciples, it's just common sense. What am I doing? Man, I don't believe in God. I, I got to gotta get some money coming in this house. How many applications you put in today? No, I just got to stay home and pray. Were you instructed to do that? No. <laughs> I think you should have just prayed while you was riding around putting in. Your job is putting in applications. It's common sense. Common sense has fleed the body of Christ. Just took off. Just took off. Just grew wings and just left. He said, verse 40, the disciple is not above his master. But everyone that is perfect shall be as his master. You see that? As. You can come up. But if you're ever going to get poured into, you got to. Talk to my spiritual voice, man. That thing you said, man, oh, man. I'm, I'm telling that, that that thing. I said, man, that thing you said. What do we do? We we, we just. But I know, I still stay on. <laughs> well, everybody else is just playing game. See, a lot of folks was just playing game. For the last 15 years, just playing game. And I was like, I ain't playing no game. One day, just like life, you may get called up out of here. There may not be no church. I got to learn how to live with my dog going on. Disciples observe. Disciples come under. Disciples have a posture to be taught. They don't get to the point where they know everything. They know how to follow and come under. And they're not smarter than everybody in the room. They're standing together. My wife said, man, this is, this is, this. I said, Zonk. What do I call it? I got some weird nickname. I said, look, there's somebody else on this earth that understands this a whole lot better than I do. I'm just saying my little part. Saying, yeah, but man, trust me, <laughs> there's somebody else that understands that. And you know what? That, it, keeps, it keeps you. <clears throat> oh. So you got to learn how to come under. He said, listen, you'll never be higher. You're never going to be higher than Jesus. See, when people get higher than Jesus, you know what they say? You know what? I understand the scripture. I understand that. But right, here's what they say. Right now, I don't need no scripture. Oh, you ready to take something higher than that? Before you make this move, you gonna employ something higher than that? When you make that statement, what you're saying is, I know what Jesus said, but I'm going this way. Oh, you're about to be higher than your master, huh? I thought he told us we'll never, we'll never, we'll never do that. You're about to become God in your own life. Lord, have mercy. In your notes, equality can rob us of full discipleship. <laughs> Man walks around with a, a, with a mentality that he's equal to everybody. I tell you what, he will sit in a church. And that church can be anointed to save marriages. You get divorced three times. Why? He has a spirit of equality on him. He don't employ nothing he's told to do. He don't follow no example that he sees. He's equal. You know what? 
A lot of people are equal with no execution skills. They pride themselves on being equal, but they can't, they can't build nothing. They can't carry nothing out. And you know what? A disciple understands, I got to keep this equality spirit out of me. It's going to rob you of discipleship. <clears throat> Number two. <clears throat> A disciple of Christ embraces guidance. <laughs> they see guidance. They don't see guidance as a mark of not knowing something. See, a lot of times when we say, look, look, let somebody guide you. What do they say? Man, I, I couldn't do this unless some man teach me. Unless some man guides me. I, I, that's a revelation. And there are some things I have no problem as a disciple of Christ saying, I don't know how to do that. If I need to find it in the Bible. I don't know where that's at. Let me get my concordance. Let me, let me help. Let me, let me, let me find it. But people who, people who thrive on equality, they'll stand there and argue with you with no, no foundation of scripture. You're afraid to say you don't know. Mm. Okay, I really got to pause here. Let me read you the LEB translation uh, of Luke 640 real quick. It says, a disciple is not superior to his teacher. But everyone, when he is fully trained, will be like his teacher. The message translation says, Luke 6, 4, uh, can a blind... <laughs> It says, can a blind man guide the blind? Wouldn't they both end up in a ditch? An apprentice doesn't lecture his master. Man, you'd be surprised how many. I've seen that happen a lot of times. And people don't want to hear this right here. Where's your fruit at? I'm just saying the Greek and the Hebrew, this, this, this. I know, where's your fruit? From that word that you got such a revelation on. Where is it at? Why? Disciples know how to hearken. You know what hearken means? Hear and do. Hear and do. And if we're going to be disciples of Christ, when he says, no, 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 no. When you give with good measure, good measure, here's how it's going to come back to you. How to hear and do. And the disciple has that, he has that strength. Well, she has that strength. Oh, I gave this last thing. I got this last night. <sighs> A disciple's revelation A disciple's revelation of his God behind the word is higher than his knowledge of the word. He has a revelation of the God behind that word sitting on your lap. And it's higher than his knowledge of the word. I know a lot of knowledgeable people in scripture, but they don't understand the God behind that thing. It's second guessing. They can't move nothing. Can't build nothing. Can't get free from stuff. Always recurring through stuff. Man, you got a lot of, you, you got a lot of revelation of that word. Just no revelation of the God behind it. The God is finished behind it. He's already gave you that. What you're trying to get, he's already did it for you. What you're trying to get, you got to have a revelation of the God of that word that you preach and you teach and you quote and you do this and you study and all that kind of stuff, that's great. But when the rubber meets the road, when we're crying, don't know what to do, on our knees, don't know how to figure it out, can't figure it out, you know what? I had knowledge of the word. I could have went right to a scripture. You know what? It's a shortcut. I said, no, I know the God of that word. I can go to scripture and, and quote them, put them on my mirror. I, I, I can do that. But the God of that word, I'm plugging into you now. This is the one setting me free right here. Amen. I seen a guy on the word and that word flipping and going through scripture and flipping it and building the case and all this kind of stuff. And this, that, and that. I'm saying to myself, brother, just read the scripture. I, I mean, 
Just, just read this. Just read the scripture to him. My Lord. I see my spiritual granddad. He come out with a sheet of paper now. He needs man, all them scriptures, all that kind of stuff. He ain't, 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 ain't got but I ain't, all them scriptures. Ain't got. I just what? The revelation of the God behind that word will set the people free. Amen. They get a revelation of the God behind that word. They'll get free. You ain't got to go flipping and flopping and all that kind of stuff. Just open it up and read it to them. And do what? Remind them of the one who set them free. And watch. That freedom right there is going to be authentic. Were you blessed by the word of God? We got to get out of here.